Good morning, happy Monday. Oh, you can see that sun shining down on me. It is such a beautiful day today, and I'm so happy about that. Literally, you would never know that it was snowing last week. <laughs> I'm currently on my way to my knit design class, and today we actually have a critique of everything we've been working on for the whole semester so far. And in honor of that, I decided to wear one of my hand knit scarves that actually inspired one of my pieces that I'm showing today. So let me show you my outfit. So this is the Terraform shawl, which I knit ages ago. And every time I've worn it so far in my vlogs, I always mention that it's been years since I made it and I still haven't blocked it. I finally blocked it last night and it is so much nicer. I don't know why I kept procrastinating on that. But let me show you the shawl. It's knit with Noro, of course, held double with mohair. So it's super cozy and super lightweight because of all those drop stitches. Anyway, enough about that. I'm gonna head to campus now. Here's my finished project for my digital knit design class. We were asked to create three stripe designs and then recolor them to suit two different fashion trends. For both projects, I wanted to explore the rise in popularity of crafting and making clothes by hand. For this first collection, I went with a colorway inspired by indigo and other natural dyes to cater to the crafting demographic that's inspired by traditional techniques and a connectedness with nature. For my second collection, I created a colorway that's much more bold to cater to the crafting demographic that's inspired by repurposing materials and experimenting with unconventional forms. I also brought my knitting with me for this critique because I knew we'd be sitting around for quite a while and I just really needed something to do to keep my hands busy. And today I actually ended up finishing my scarf. This is my Sophie scarf, which I've been working on for the past few weeks, and I'm using an amazing silk and seaweed based tencel yarn that I got from Vogue Knitting Live. Hello again, I just got out of my knit class and overall the critique went really well. I definitely thought going into it because our teacher said, oh, we'll get to leave as soon as all the critiques are done. So I definitely thought we'd be maybe there for a couple hours going through everyone's stuff and then get to go home early, but nope. It literally took the whole six hour period to get through everyone's stuff, which I guess makes sense because we all had like two projects to show and like 12 slides each or something, but it's just a lot to like sit in a room and listen to that many presentations. So I'm kind of in need of like some air I'm gonna walk around a little bit and then slowly make my way home. I also wanna block that scarf that I just finished, which I'm super excited about. So yeah, I'm gonna wander, gonna head home, gonna block the scarf, gonna do some homework, and I'll see you tomorrow. Wednesday. So this morning when I was getting dressed, I put on my little Sophie scarf and I wanted to show you my outfit, but then I started thinking that I actually have quite a few things that I made recently that haven't like made it to my channel yet. And I wanted to do a tiny little show and tell before heading to school today. So first off, here's my little show and tell of my Sophie scarf, which I made using the yarn I got at Vogue Knitting Live, as I already told you in this video. And I'm so excited about how it turned out. I know this is something that is gonna get a lot of wear and I'm really excited for it. This winter break, I also kind of went on like a hat knitting spree and I used the Park and Knit Faux Chapeau pattern and I actually made three different hats. I made one in black, one in green, and one in this like really crazy, huge, fluffy chenille yarn that's zebra colored and it feels like a marshmallow and I absolutely love it. So here are my three hats. Oh my gosh, my hair. I need a haircut so bad and I just haven't had the time, so just ignore that. <laughs> anyway, here are my three hats, which are so cozy and so silly, and I just feel so much joy wearing them. <laughs> Another project I finished, you might recognize if you saw my Rhinebeck video, where I bought this absolutely beautiful skein of yarn with the intention of making a curtsy collar, which is also by Parkin Knit, and I finally finished that. So I have this crazy purple fluffy mohair collar, which is just 
such a joy and I haven't actually figured out exactly how I want to style and wear it yet but I had so much fun making it I'm sure I'll figure out some way to show it off here's how it looks on the top that I'm wearing right now and it is just so silly I absolutely love it the last project I wanted to share with you is actually a woven project and I made it over winter break and I didn't film any of the process because I just really wanted to have some like me time at the loom but now I have this beautiful scarf that I'm excited to show you and it's all black and white with these crazy little yellow poofy details from this amazing yarn. I'll put a picture of what the ball of yarn looks like, but it's basically just like gray. And then every like foot or so, there's a yellow little poofy thing. And it just makes me smile every time I look at it. So I wanted to feature it very strongly in a project where it's like the statement moment. So I put it with all these like black and white yarns they were just hanging out in my mom's yarn stash and some variegated black and white yarns and yeah <laughs> anyway that's it for my little show and tell i hope you enjoyed this and now it's time to head to school after my lecture class i spent the rest of my day finishing up my tabletop collection for my critique the following day before mounting all of my paintings onto a presentation board, I scanned everything so I'd have digital versions of my work. My large tablecloth design was just a little bit too big for the scanner bed, so I had to combine this design digitally. Let me show you how I did that because I think this process is pretty cool. So first, I scanned in my painting in sections. In Adobe Photoshop, I hit File, Automate, Photo Merge, and then I selected my scanned sections. Photoshop will then work its magic and it'll combine all of these sections perfectly. I definitely think this feature is a hidden gem and I wanted to share it just in case it could help anybody else. For the final piece of my presentation, I used my scans to create a texture mapping of my tabletop products just to show what they might look like in the real world. Happy Wednesday! Today's officially our critique day of our tabletop collection. So I'm carrying everything just in this bag because the poster board that would fit my whole project doesn't fit in my portfolio bag and this scares me a little bit. So I'm just gonna clutch onto it in the same way and hope we make it there in one piece. So let's hit the canvas! It's always the days where I'm carrying the most where the subway is the most insane, of course. But we mean it. <laughs> And here is my finished tabletop collection. This collection was inspired by a lovely albino alligator named Claude who lived at the aquarium that I used to work at in San Francisco. With this concept, I created a tablecloth pattern, a coordinating placemat, and three coordinating napkins. My tablecloth, which is my main design, reimagines Claude's swamp enclosure as a beautiful pond filled with colorful lily pads. For my placemat, I took the motif that I used in Claude's tail and I turned it into a border print. And for my napkins, I used the same pencils that I used to create the stripes of the lily pads and I made a really simple plaid design. I presented my work to the class and then I turned the whole thing in for my teacher to grade. After lunch, I went right back to work on my jacquard weaving class. Last week we had our critique in this class, so today my goal was to start working on the next design of my collection. I decided to consult the Miller and Lee Guide to the Coastal Marine Fishes of California for some inspiration. This is a book that we used all the time in my marine biology degree program, and it's essentially a guide that helps you figure out what kind of fish you're looking at by asking a series of questions relating to the fish's appearance and helping you narrow down the options. In California, there are over 80 species of rockfish, which are pretty much always on display at any local aquarium, so they have a really special place in my heart. I thought it might be fun to do a print inspired by them and their grumpy little faces. Hello again, I just finished up in weaving and I'm just so tired. I think that like finishing that critique 
was like a huge weight off my shoulders. And you can just feel the exhaustion of our entire class. Like we're all just like, uh, ready for spring break already. <laughs> the critique went really well overall. I presented my work. I think it was well received by my class and by the teacher. I do definitely think that like doing that additional texture mapping kind of helped me out a little bit because I, I knew that my teacher wasn't totally getting my alligator concept. Like I had a feeling deep down and when she saw the texture mapping and she saw my print contextualized, I think her attitude towards it completely shifted in my favor, which is really nice. So I'm definitely glad I took the extra time to do that. Afterwards, I had my jacquard class and you guys know that's a project that I'm super, super excited to get started on. So we had a little bit of a lecture today and then actually got going with motif creation. So those are those fish you saw me draw. And I don't know, I really like just doodling on my iPad and like having fun with that medium. So I feel very like in my element, both in terms of the iPad and also just like the fish theme. So it's been fun. I'm hoping it'll continue being fun, which I think it will be. So yeah, I'm stoked about that. Anyway, I have a little bit of work I need to do in preparation for tomorrow. So I'm just gonna head home and do that. And I'll see you then. Good morning, happy Thursday. You might notice I'm not on my normal commute today. And that's because we actually have a field trip in our class this morning which should be pretty exciting. So we're heading over to a textile showroom for the company Lensing, which produces tensile fiber, which is a really cool kind of like sustainable fiber technology that I'm really excited to learn more about. So let's go. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. They decided to redo the big button here in the garment district. And this is what it looks like right now. It's all bright and yellow and cheerful and it has threads that are actually like going through the buttonholes. This is so cool. Like I said, we had the wonderful opportunity to visit Lensing, a company that produces fibers like Tencel, Modal, and Lyocell. These fibers are derived from sustainably grown wood using a unique closed loop system, which recovers and reuses the manufacturing solvents, which minimizes the environmental impact of production. After learning all about this fiber's properties and its sustainable manufacturing, and after exploring Lensing's showroom to see how the material can be used, I will say that I am a fan and I'm definitely gonna be on the lookout for Tencel products in the future. After our field trip, my friends and I decided to treat ourselves to a lovely little lunch date. Then we went back to class to start yet another major project. We're switching from tabletop design to bathroom design, and we need to create a collection that includes a shower curtain, hand towel, and hard products like a soap dish or a waste basket. I don't know how I did it, but somehow in my extreme state of exhaustion, I actually managed to come up with a super loose concept relating to 1950s atomic age aesthetics and rubber ducks. How am I gonna pull this off? I have no clue. Hello again. I just got out of class and I spent pretty much the whole like three hour period just trying to come up with that concept, make that mood board. And I'm actually not like super unhappy with it. I kind of feel like I needed a topic that was just like chill, straightforward, not a lot of detailed painting and that would make me happy. And I feel like this checks all of those boxes. So I'm gonna sleep on this mood board, see how I feel about it in the upcoming week. But at least it's a start and that feels good. <laughs> that pretty much wraps up my day today. So I'll see you tomorrow. Good morning, happy Friday. I am so glad it's finally Friday. Today I have my weaving class in the morning and then I actually finally managed to get a haircut appointment. So this will be taken care of later today, but that's gonna happen much later in the evening. So I'm gonna just like stay on campus and just get a lot of work done hopefully. So it'll be like a busy, productive day. Also today I'm wearing one of my own hand woven pieces. You might recognize this from actually what was like my first ever weaving video here on YouTube. I'll put a link to that in my video description, but let me show you the whole thing. So this is a hand-woven Wixton Haori, which I'll put, like I said, all the information down in the video description, but here's what it looks like. I also gave it this funky cheetah lining. <laughs> anyway, let's head to class.
I just finished up in class and I've been working on my fish print and it still has a lot, a lot of work that needs to be done to it, but I also made a lot of progress today, so that definitely feels good. I'm just gonna hang out, keep working on it, do some other homework, and pretty much just kill time until my hair appointment, so I'll see you around. Hello again, I'm coming to you with a fresh haircut and I feel like a fresh new person. <laughs> I love having short hair, but the issue is, is that like you have to really regularly maintain it. And unfortunately, I just haven't been able to go get a haircut recently. So as you saw, my hair just kind of kept getting like crazier and crazier every single day. So this is a huge relief. I feel so much better. Thank you so much for joining me on all of my adventures this week. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet already. And hopefully I'll see you in my next video. Bye.